Imagine the desert, endless sand, scorching heat, and survival at its most challenging. Most of us associate these barren landscapes with cactus, camels, and the burning sun. But what if I told you that in the heart of one of the world's driest deserts, fresh seafood is being harvested? Yes, China has turned a once lifeless desert into a thriving hub for agriculture and aquaculture. In today's video, we'll explore how China accomplished this astonishing feat and what it means for the future of desert ecosystems. Over the past 30 years, China has committed to massive desert reclamation projects. These efforts included tree planting campaigns, irrigation systems, and advanced soil treatments to improve fertility. One of the most remarkable examples of this transformation can be seen in the Kabuki Desert, where the Chinese government, along with private companies like Elyon Resources Group, has successfully greened large areas that were once just sand and dust. So, how does that work? China's covered the longest desert highway in Xinjiang with verdant forests by employing the world's first desert terraforming technology. Additionally, the Xinjiang Autonomous Region of China has made significant technological advancements in the fields of freshwater and saline aquaculture, which includes freshwater fish, tiger shrimp, and lobster, as reported by SCMP. This is one of the arid region's most remarkable accomplishments. Xinjiang Aquaculture Company, Xixi Zhan, which was established in 2022, recently announced its success in a pilot project to develop technology that stimulates seawater in a fishing ground situated at the desert's border. The salinity of the natural saltwater in southern Xinjiang was near that of seawater, according to Mr. Chen Xianqing, the project's supervisor. The China Association of Science and Technology published an article in the China Business Herald that stated that this would enable artificial mariculture with the company's objective of enhancing the availability of seafood in China's inland regions. Chen stated that we capitalized on the saline alkaline soil, modified the probiotic levels, and incorporated additional micronutrients into the water to replicate the various seawater environments that are essential for the various species. This information was initially disclosed in mid-August. However, it was only recently disseminated amid concerns regarding marine security in the wake of the water discharge from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. In response to the discharge of wastewater from a nuclear facility that was devastated by the earthquake and tsunami 12 years ago, China has recently banned all Japanese seafood products. In order to reduce changes in temperature in Xinjiang, the organization maintains approximately 60 greenhouses that serve as interior ponds. The company has created eight distinct varieties of seafood, which are initially cultivated indoors before getting relocated to outdoor wetlands. The expansion of seafood production in Xinjiang was cited by Chinese media as a typical example of how China urged local academics and officials to identify methods to modernize agriculture and guarantee the security of the supply of agricultural products. Guo Junwei, a manager at Xinjiang Benteng Biotechnology Company, disclosed that the organization sold each kilo of black tiger shrimp for 200 yuan. This information pertains to aquaculture. As a result, the income and quality of life of the local populace has been significantly enhanced. This is also a typical illustration of the rural economic development model of this nation. The UN has long recognized China as the world's biggest seafood producer, with China contributing at least 18% of the global seafood capture. Beijing is placing a greater emphasis on the significance of food security in order to achieve greater independence in agricultural production, which is currently characterized by an unstable global food market that's influenced by war, climate change, and geopolitical tensions. Salt alkaline tolerant rice, also referred to as saline rice, is being produced at Xinjiang, one of the seven pilot areas selected to enhance crop yields. However, the arid environment also challenges the sustainability of agricultural development due to the lack of water. Companies were able to utilize water supplies from high-altitude lakes, snowmelt in mountainous areas, or siphon groundwater up from underneath the mountain in order to make freshwater seafood at fish farms in Xinjiang. The objective of Xinjiang authorities is to elevate the annual seafood production to approximately 30,000 tons by next year. In that same year, China intends to increase its seafood production to 69 million tons. Freshwater fishing in Xinjiang also generates substantial income for people, as reported by the Xinhua News Agency. Boston, the largest inland freshwater lake in the country, experiences its busiest fishing season from August to October. It's situated in the Xinjiang Autonomous Region. 
Since 2018, the Kaidu River has supplied Lake Boston with a total of 807 million cubic meters of water, thereby enhancing the lake's water quality and circulation efficiency. The ecosystem is significantly influenced by the extensive reed beds of Lake Boston, which spans over 40,000 acres. They have the potential to assist the filtration of water and provide habitat and shelter for a variety of aquatic and avian species. 198 species of migratory birds have been observed in the lake, which is now home to an increasing number of them. The lake has been revitalized by the favorable ecological environment, establishing it as the largest fish production base in Xinjiang. It generates over four tons of a variety of seafood every year, like freshwater prawns, grass carp, and crabs. The owner of the crab farming facility, Yuan Junwei, stated that the harvest began in August of this year after the release of 36 million crab seeds last year. Xinjiang's total seafood production last year was 173 tons, placing it second among the five provinces and autonomous regions in northwest China. The concept of constructing a sea in the desert has been prevalent for an extended period of time. However, the success of this model serves as yet another indication of China's global influence. The concept of establishing a lagoon in the Sahara Desert was first proposed by scientists back in 1957. Don Mackenzie, a Scottish engineer, was the first to propose the concept. He intended to transfer the El Hoof Basin into the Sahara Sea by flooding it. Mackenzie suggested the construction of a 644-kilometer-long canal from Morocco to the basin, which would create an inland sea equivalent to the size of Ireland, spanning 96.5 square kilometers. Similarly, in the 1870s, Captain Francois Roder of the French Army proposed the development of a canal that would connect the Mediterranean Sea with the Chatfahig of Salt Lake area in the Sahara Desert in southern Tunisia. This would flood 4.8 square kilometers of sandy land, which was inspired by the Suez Canal. Ferdinand Lesseps, a French diplomat who was renowned for overseeing the construction of the Suez, provided his endorsement of the concept, approximately 25 million francs or a little over 4 million US dollars were required to execute the concept at that time. The strategy would facilitate the establishment of additional commercial routes for French vessels. Lesseps and his companions aspired to transform central North Africa into a more fertile and affluent region. Nevertheless, this ambitious plan was never realized due to the fact that the area was not actually below sea level and costs were on the rise. This was discovered during numerous expeditions. Writer Jules Verne was inspired by the plan to mention the construction of the canal in his novel Invasion of the Sea back in 1905, despite its failure. In order to construct a canal that would flood the Qatar Depression 60 meters below sea level, researchers determined that 213 nuclear weapons would need to be detonated. Nevertheless, the detonation of nukes was prohibited by numerous international agreements and the Plowshare Project got terminated in 1977. A Silicon Valley corporation named Y Combinator introduced the concept of flooding the Algodons Desert in California as a solution to global warming in 2018. This happened more recently in 2018. Their objective was to establish half an acre of water reservoirs for the cultivation of phytoplankton, which would serve as carbon sinks. Nevertheless, this initiative had not been promoted, despite its estimated cost of $50 trillion. Currently, the globe is under threat from desertification. The international community has long acknowledged that desertification is a comprehensive issue that affects the economy, society, and environment of numerous countries worldwide. The UN issued a warning that the process of desertification is one of the biggest environmental challenges of our era. According to the UN announcement, the fashion industry is anticipated to consume 35% more land by 2030, primarily for the production of basic materials for low-cost fashion. The annual loss of squandering of food is equivalent to the production capacity of 1.5 billion acres of productive land. In order to guarantee food security for the global population by 2030, an additional 300 million hectares of land will be required for food production based on current consumption. Nevertheless, the resource land is at risk of significant decline in a reverse development. Land degradation, desertification, and recurring droughts result in the loss of over 12 million acres of land annually. This is the process by which once fertile land is degraded by drought, deforestation, over-farming, or climate change. During this process, the soil's nutrients are so depleted that it's no longer fertile and eventually it becomes desiccated. 
they'll progressively lose their capacity to produce and will not enter the process of desertification if timely intervention is not provided. China's accomplishments in the transformation of deserts into regions with significant economic potential and the subsequent greening of them have resolved a complex global issue. We are committed to releasing two videos a week. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more visionary builds.